Welcome to today's uh, webinar uh, on Ravenna products and applications, particularly virtually sound cards will be the topic uh, for today. This uh, is the final uh, presentation in the Ravenna 2020 summer webinar series. And I'm very happy to have some uh, very interesting guests aboard, uh, which uh, I will introduce in a minute. Uh, a word of housekeeping first. Um, we have a Q&A function, which you are encouraged to use to send in uh, any questions you might have, which, will we, uh, which we will happily discussing at the end of the uh, webinar. If you have a very particular questions regarding one or the other um, product uh, being introduced during the webinar, we may uh, interrupt uh, shortly between the two presentations and uh, see if the uh, presenters can directly answer your questions. So please feel free to send in any questions uh, you like using the Q&A function. So, all right, uh, without further ado, let's just jump in into today's uh, webinar. Um, let me introduce me first. For those who don't know me, my name is Andreas Hildebrand. I'm working as a technology evangelist uh, for ALC Networks out of Munich, Germany. And uh, the sole purpose, the sole um, task of ALC Networks actually is the development and maintenance of the Ravenna IP media technology. As you may know, Ravenna is an open technology approach, fully licensing free and absolutely compliant and in line with AES67 and SEMTST2110 uh, standards. All right, so uh, it's time to introduce today's presenters. Uh, I uh, welcome Jochen Richter from uh, LAVO in Rastatt. Uh, Jochen, uh, you should uh, be on the line now. So, yeah. hello, Jochen. Hello, everybody. Okay, and for, also from LAVO supporting Jochen is Johannes Freiberger from the uh, Research and Development Department. Uh, Johannes is the uh, uh, the genius behind uh, Lavo's uh, range, uh, product range of virtual sound cards. He's also based uh, in Germany. So welcome, Johannes. Hi, hello, everybody. All right. Uh, the second half of the webinar uh, is dedicated to merging technologies. Merging has also some very interesting news about their uh, virtual sound card offerings. So I welcome Morris Engler. He's product and project manager from Merging Technology, uh, which is based in Switzerland. So welcome, Maurice. Hello, everyone. All right. So again, any questions you have, uh, use the Q&A function. And uh, now it's time to hand over to Jochen from LAVO uh, so that we can learn uh, the latest news about uh, LAVO's offering on virtual sound cards. So uh, Jochen, you should be able to take it right away from here. And of course, uh, we would like to start today introducing some new developments we have in our Relay virtual sound card. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Andreas and ALC for having us as a guest today in this nice session. This session, of course, is related uh, to the virtual sound cards. So this is, of course, the core topic. And uh, we have two things we would um, like to show here. First of all, Johannes and myself, we are already have been introduced by you. Thank you very much. Yeah, what we and would like to re refer on is the our Relay uh, virtual sound card. Um, we will do a short overview about the Relay product line. We have two new uh, important developments for Relay we want to focus on today. Uh, it is CPU load optimizations and a, a new WDM driver. Then we would like to talk shortly about the impact on radio remote solutions, mobile use and data center installs, because this is exactly where this refers to. And then of course, as Andreas, you indicated that already, we are referring to question and answers. Yeah, first of all, um, we have a complete product family or product range of Relay products. So Relay is the family name more or less. So we have the virtual sound card, the virtual patch bay. This is as well a sound card with more channels. We have a virtual radio mixer uh, in four different or two different versions. Um, and uh, we have a stream monitor 
and the configurator. So these are all products which work with on basis of Urbana and AS67 technology. Uh, and therefore, yeah, it's uh, of course uh, showing that we are implementing these standards fully. What we want to concentrate uh, today on is, sorry to switch a little bit, um, we want to focus on the uh, Relay Virtual Sound Card and the Virtual Patch Bay. These are the core focus points for today. Yeah, in Relay, we have done based on, let's say, um, meanwhile, Relay is already quite a while on the market and we have seen a lot of implementations, meanwhile, worldwide using our Relay products, being directly used by customers and being as well used by a lot of corporation partners who integrate the virtual sound card instead of a physical sound device uh, in a lot of installations. And with more and more installations coming up, we have seen that the it might be time to look at that and to optimize the whole product line and the whole uh, uh, yeah, software setup. And we have exactly started this activity uh, some months ago. And we now have finalized um, at least two important points. Uh, CPU load optimizations, this is a new relay development being in testing, so we will finalize it uh, in Q3, meaning uh, within some weeks from now on. And we have a new WDM driver uh, made by us, and this is ready already now. Yeah, first I would like to focus on the CPU load optimizations. Um, this new development, what does it mean in practice? It means in practice for customers, they can install the Relay software on less performant PCs. Because normally we have a system specification with a certain benchmark. And um, seeing that uh, the Relay software as well is spreaded worldwide, um, as well for customers in countries where they have already some uh, notebooks or PCs that might be two or three years old. So therefore, uh, it's good to see and good to, to um, Acknowledge, yeah, we they will be able as well to install the Relay software even on these platforms if they fulfill a minimum requirement here. Yeah, with the same PC performance, of course, um, even customers can experience that more channels and more processes can, of course, run in parallel because the whole um, application has been optimized fully. For the use in mobile applications and remote studios, of course, these as well can now can run on standard PCs and notebooks. Uh, recently, we had a presentation for radio remote solutions and exactly in this environment, uh, some customers are using the Relay VRX. It makes a lot of sense to have an optimized setup. The second aspect I want to talk about a little bit in, as an introduction because Johannes will tell you a lot of more details. Um, we have done a new WDM driver optimized by us and the impact of this um, um, WDM driver is, of course, audio processing. The audio processing chain is optimized in terms of timing. A triggered fader start is faster now. This has to do with the inst uh, in integration with uh, co normally automation systems. The, duff the buffer management is optimized, meaning that we have a maximum output on the same PC and configuration. And to, uh, we will not stop here. So we are working and continuously to uh, further optimize uh, the whole pr process chain. So we are looking at different aspects. Perhaps Johannes can give some indications what we intend to do next. CPU load and WGM GM drivers have been the first step here. Yeah, especially uh, the impact on customer installs, uh, especially radio re uh, remote solutions benefit from these two new developments, so they have a positive impact. As well, of course, if Relay, VPB, and BSC are installed on virtualized platforms with less CPU power is needed, and again, this optimizes the whole process chain and uh, optimizes the audio processing plus timing. Yeah, that's so far from my side, referring to the market impact and let's say the sales aspect and as well, let's say the importance for projects. Uh, and I now hand over to Johannes to give you more information, especially on these three points I was just referring to. Thank you so much for listening and viewing. Okay, thank you, Jochen, and hello from my side. Um, before I start to going in from 
going into the details from the relay virtual sound card, I like to um, give you some impressions what makes it difficult to write a virtual driver on such a PC system. Normally, you would assume that you have plenty of CPU power on such systems, at least compared to embedded systems. Normally, the embedded systems only have weak um, processors and um, a normal PC as you use it today has uh, lots of power compared to this. But the problem is you don't, you are not the master of the CPU power. So there is a scheduler in each system which assigns you some times to do your work. And um, there are different systems for Windows. It's even worse that um, even not the, the Windows scheduler itself is the, the the most the, the most important master of the scheduler. So Windows is no real-time operating system by design. Um, that means each driver can blow up the system. Um, that means you, you really have to carefully set up such a PC if you want to use it for real-time audio. That is not only true for, for Relay or for, for our products. If you do some real-time audio on a PC, you will find lots of tips and, and instructions how to configure your system. And it's really uh, important to know about these. But so there are a few things you can do on your side to make such a system behave good and, and work perfect. And there are also things we can do on our side. The things we can do on our side, for example, are to do things in the Windows kernel. The Windows kernel um, is a little bit privileged against the user mode. And so we decided, for example, to send out um, the, the, the UDP packets when we do streaming from a, from a kernel. And um, so we achieve uh, lower jitters and when compared to, to sending it from the user mode. And um, there's also the audio stuff, which is handled in the kernel. On the other side, you cannot do everything in the kernel. So you have to transfer the, the data between the kernel and the user mode. And we also optimized this. And, and um, when you look at the audio, it's in Windows, it's also a, a big a question always, should I use the, the WDM driver, should I use ASIO? And many people like to use the WDM driver. It's a standard on Windows, um, but you also have to be aware uh, that there are different modes how to access uh, the, the, the audio API in Windows. And um, each API has its advantages and disadvantages and there are lots of history when you look at the Microsoft Audio APIs. And um, nowadays, it's like you have two modes to access these um, audio drivers, which is an exclusive mode and a shared mode. Microsoft wants you to use the shared mode, but you have to be aware if you use the shared mode, then your audio will also um, be handled in the Windows Audio Mixer. There will be a peak limiter applied to it. There will be dithering. And if you're, uh, yes, if some of the applications accessing um, this driver decides to lose a, to use a very low sample rate, then you can also have the effect that you have uh, so sample rate conversions and things like this. And um, all this um, has been designed by Microsoft and is out of our scope. And so, we recommend um, to use the exclusive mode, um, which is um, bit transparent, but which prevents um, different applications uh, from using uh, the same audio device at the same time. Um, on the other hand, we tried to, to do no special things which require special hardware. For example, if you look at PTP, then you could say, well, um, don't we need a special network interface um, because we have to do hardware timestamping? Um, that would be true if you, your PC would try to be the PTP master. Um, Relay is always only PTP slave. And um, so it's OK for us to use a standard network controller and just um, try to get the, the, the arriving sync 
PTP messages um, as exact as possible. This will be fairly within a range of a, a millisecond. And um, I mentioned the Windows scheduler at the beginning of my wording. And um, I already, you know, the Windows scheduler still handles time slices of 10 milliseconds normally. So um, if we have um, a resolution or accuracy below one millisecond for PTP, then it's fairly enough on a PC and we won't be master anyway. And it's uh, good enough to, to send out the, the UDP packets um, in a like a accuracy which is required by AES67. Um, but not using such a special hardware makes it possible to, to use Relay also in a virtual environment. And that's a very big benefit. We don't need special hardware. Um, we can run on a virtual environment. We already have customers running Relay in virtual environments. And um, we mainly support VMware. That's where we also have our own system. Um, but here, you also have to be aware that even one more level of scheduler um, even outside the Windows machine and you also have to set up carefully this host. Um, we have some, some white papers from, from VMware how to set up such a host and to make it possible that the machine is not swapped out of the memory or it's just uh, delayed. For us, it's a problem if, if, the, if we don't have any CPU for 20 or 30 milliseconds, we can send any packets. And um, probably if you have some hardware device on the other side, then you will see dropouts because the, the jitter buffer is not big enough to handle such delays. And that's also um, already coming to the end of my words. Um, when you try to set up such a system, you should be aware that um, there is an, um, a coherence between the jitter buffer and the latency and, and how to set up the two system. So when you are using a PC and you want to have uh, relaxed CPU and, and no special requirements, then it's always good to have um, low requirements for latencies and um, big jitter buffers on the receiving side. And the lower you want the latency to be and the lower the jitter buffer is on the receiving side, the more you have to step into configurating the PC or the virtual environment to make sure that the packets can be sent out in time. And um, that's something which we see very often that the people try to, to achieve very low latencies and, and they, they have to tweak their system. And in the end, it turns out that it uh, also would have been fine to, to have um, 10 milliseconds of jitter buffer. And then uh, some suddenly the PC um, is no problem anymore. So it's um, always good to know where the screws are, which you can uh, try to, to fasten or to loosen and um, how this has influence and impact on the whole system. So I'm handing back to Jochen. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for these detailed explanations, uh, Johannes. I think uh, exactly these are the points we are where we have to, uh, or which we have taken into consideration by optimizing the application. On the test version, we have uh, used with some uh, external partners. We have already already got a lot of positive feedback, uh, so that they are really saying uh, that this really uh, gives a big difference in terms of the uh, former version uh, until uh, May or June this year and the newer version. And therefore, we are quite happy to see this, and uh, we thought it is useful to share it with you as an audience uh, that uh, uh, we have now really progressed uh, in uh, yeah, making a new version available quite soon. Uh, and there will be no price difference, so it will be the same uh, pricing and will be it's the same. It's a new software version, uh, but it is not a new product. It, it's an improved product, and I think this is exactly what, what we want to look at and what we are now offering. So therefore, we are happy now to take some questions, if there are questions. Um, so we are still completely within our timeline of half an hour. But if, um, yeah, there will be no questions, but we will see. Thank you so much. OK, Jochen, thank you. Uh, and Johannes, uh, thank you for now. Um, Roland, I have seen one question coming in, but I'm not 
really sure if we can answer it. You might want to try. We can ask. Um, is it from Olivier, who's asking, what are the is the bu buffer reception values on the Relay VSC? So maybe you could talk a bit about the um, buffer reception values. You're thinking about uh, the, the the size of the buffer and how the chitter has be to be to receive it well for relay. So if that's the question. Um, I think that's normally not a problem. If if you are on a PC, then it's not like um, we have only five or ten or twenty milliseconds of buffer. Normally, a relay is easily up to um, two or three hundred milliseconds of buffering, and you can even adjust it. So you, we have some latency settings, and um, so normally um, a high chitter for receiving um, is is no problem for for a PC or for a virtual device, really. Okay. All That's right. Um, question. Uh, oh, are there plans for a Mac version? Uh, currently, the platform we are referring on for many reasons because of the virtual platform and the uh, wide use of this uh, uh, Apple platform or the support of the Mac platform is not, uh, let's say, and yeah, planned so far. But uh, to be honest, this was not the first uh, question for a Mac platform. So um, yeah, we will see. If we can do it uh, currently for this year, next year, I don't see it. But um, this is a question more or less to our product line. I'm part of that, but uh, our product management is focusing on that, that. We will take this with us. And as I just mentioned, it's not the first question we've got regarding this. Okay, well, and, uh, and actually, someone has just followed up um, asking about Linux as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The same question and the same answer. So we have here. This is not the first time that we have been asked about that. So we uh, we will take this into consideration. At least we will discuss it in our product but line. This gives me a perfect bridge uh, to the next part uh, of today's webinar. So again, uh, Johannes, Jochen, thank you so far. Um, the next, yes. The next, uh, we'll see you in the Q&A section at the end again, of course. The next uh, part of the of today's webinar uh, is um, covering new developments by merging technologies. And I definitely know that uh, Mac as well as Linux are something those guys have in the back. So um, i like to welcome uh, Maurice again. Maurice, um, we are very interested uh, what merging uh, has an offer uh, for now. So okay. take it from there, Maurice. Yes, thank you. I shared my screen, so you should all see it. I think it's fine. Yeah. So the thing is that indeed, we have, uh, um, since quite some time already, we have um, different types of drivers. And what I want today to focus on, it's on a new, we don't call it driver anywhere anymore, we call it merging audio device because it does much more than just driving uh, 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 connecting, let's say, a, a computer, a PC, or a Mac, or whatever, to uh, a hardware or to the network. You can understand it in a second. But first of all, on the screen here is what we have today. Uh, we have a core audio driver on the left side, so this is for the Mac people, and that we try as much as possible, obviously, to keep up to date with the OS uh, 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 changes and so on. So you see at the very bottom, it's supported up to Catalina 10.15.2. Dot three is worked on. Uh, and on the right side, we have today the Azure driver that we have. Uh, both are uh, working differently if you go higher in sample rates, obviously, because of the architecture of the operating system. Um, on the Next point, we also have uh, the possibility to work them either in AS67 or in Ravenna, uh, one and the other. And uh, you can obviously check the buffer size as well. I'm, I'm coming to the merging audio device on those details a little bit later because they are much more, let's say, developed. And down here, we have, obviously, I didn't prepare a picture or whatever, because I, I wasn't sure if the question was asked, but we also have a Linux driver uh, that supports uh, uh, AS67 and Ravenna, though we have only 64 in and outputs. We've noticed that it's sufficient for those type of applications for the moment. 
and uh, the core audio works without hardware so this can work straight away uh, with 64 channels above and for the ASIO and for the Linux uh, sorry for the ASIO you need some merging hardware and for the Linux it depends the different versions of it good let me go to the next slide and this is our new so this is basically not yet released as i'm speaking we are in a release candidate uh, uh, phase and in the coming weeks or let's say at the end of uh, q2 now uh, uh, there will be a release of merging audio device and so merging audio device is basically supporting many things multi asio first of all so it means that uh, not only one application one audio application let's say a, a, a premiere or whatever it is or pyramix is supported but also something else so you can have two let's say a sound design one or a, or a playout system plus a daw or a mixer or whatever it is then you can even bridge different i have a few examples afterwards so it's going to make it uh, much easier uh, with practical cases to understand but a bridge basically that connect in and outputs from those different applications without going through an in and an output a physical in and an output of the computer and then what is great obviously uh, we support uh, VD wdm so uh, windows driver model that means that all of this as you um, applications can have access to uh, windows 10 uh, 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 vdm support of youtube whatever it is but obviously purely broadcast applications and a few other optional features that i come to in a second what we see as we do mac drivers core audio drivers and asio drivers since now several years is that many of our users that are working on a mac they really enjoy the aggregation possibility that you have on a Mac. And this is always something that was missing in the Windows world. So what we try to do with the merging audio device is basically to recreate an aggregation like the, the Mac people are familiar with, but on the PC side, on the Windows side, plus many more features. So to show you a little bit, um, this is the, the, the driver we have today for ASIO, and this is the look of the new merging audio device. Both need a merging hardware to function. So this is basically, um, uh, uh, Johannes just before mentioned uh, uh, some, 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 some details about the way it functions, but basically our merging uh, hardware is providing the PTP and to drive to sync the ASIO drive to be able that our system is functioning. So this is in a local aspect on 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 that issue. Huh? If we if we look at it, the the obviously the the device could be at a distance somewhere else. So let's compare a little bit what is new, where things is, can change. So first of all, this is where we're gonna set up which adapter is connecting to the output world, to the network. So basically from this merging audio device, this is now here an, adap an adapter, an RG45 adapter, a network adapter with uh, an IP address. And we have a secondary adapter in there. So this is new in a merging audio device. That means that we are supporting obviously the ST2022-7. And uh, we have those two separate streams that can be uh, uh, connected. Uh, and then we obviously can go into AS67 motors with all its uh, 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 sharing in terms of uh, latency and the same thing for the Ravenna, which is just below here. Um, that's exactly what I was saying. So this is one of the options. So the merging audio device has a few options. One of them is the support of the ST2022-7 uh, uh, in terms of uh, its optional features. The next thing which is great in this merging audio device, so this is not now related to the to the to the driver itself, it's related more to a user-friendly application because from here you can directly recall all the different devices, hardware devices or features basically that are sitting on the network or connected to the network over here. That means that you can basically open the remote control. So if I double click on mine, I have one open so I can do it live. So this is now my merging audio device that I'm using here. I double click there and I will open a web browser and this web browser will bring it to you. 
and you will see that uh, I will have an Anubis here uh, from which I can directly remote control. If it would be a happy, it will show up here as well, or Horus and so on. And all the devices would show up there. Of course, I can I could change the name and say it's not Anubis, whatever number, but it will be a, a booth next to me or Studio 25 and so on. Good. The next uh, important feature, this was existing in our previous drives, but it, it, it went much further. So you can frame, depending on the application you are, first of all, needing or the applications you are needing, but also, indeed, the processor you have um, on, on, on the, your, your skin, basically, to be able to process all those audio streams. So you can frame, basically, what your need is in numbers of in and outputs and in numbers of bridges. So in, in, in terms of in and outputs, that means Today, here, I have a total of 24 in and outputs. But if I need suddenly a bigger production, obviously, I can go up to 128, right? And this 128, if I look down here on the right side, it tells me also, if I go into higher sample rates each time, how they're shared, obviously, by 2 divided by 2 each time I go then to 2FS, to 4FS, and so on. Um, but if I only need 24, I will only use the bandwidth of 24 and keep some processing power for other applications, for audio application or whatever is required. So this is very important so that you, you can really size the dimension of what you need. And as it is multi-ASIO, that means also now in this very instant, because I have 24 ins and 24 outs, I can share those 24 ins in between different applications. So for instance, I have a ripper here that I can call, and I could define that I have 12 in and outputs for my ripper. And I could have a pyramix as well, so it's another Azure application, and I have another 12. It could be 8 and, and, and 16 or whatever, you share it the way you want. But basically, I have a total of 24 in an Azure in and output at this present moment that I can share in between different applications. And then I can bridge channels on the top of it. So this is added on those 24. Bridging means uh, the, the most, perhaps one of the very, uh, uh, very obvious uh, explanation for a sound designer. Uh, he uses another tool with, with uh, sequencing, VSTIs and so on, on a special application uh, and that he wants or she wants simply to, to stream th those buses, those stems into the main workstation and mix it in there without going through the driver, through uh, a hardware, through an output or whatever it is. And just that gives, in this case, 16 in and outputs between these two softwares and, and adding it on the top of it, those 24. Good. Let me go back to there, to the next one. And this is very important and interesting. This is basically telling me, as I'm able to have several Azure instances bridged or connected to it, who is the master? And uh, when I say who is the master, uh, in terms of sample rate, for example, which is critical. Obviously, in a pure broadcast environment, we stand generally with the same sample rate, but we, as we are speaking at the same time to broadcast customers or projects, and as well as to music and to film and to post-production, we see that, first of all, the music people, of course, tend to change sample rates very frequently, uh, mostly project-based, but we see also that the music production in the broadcast environment are more and more moving to 96K or even perhaps higher. So it starts to become an issue in the broadcast environment where uh, this 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 uh, sacrosanct uh, 48K starts to move a little bit to go to 96 and so on. So here that means that if I open my driver again, my real driver here, that I have a few choices. And those choices are basically what is my master device that sets the sample rate for all the others. So here I have my ripper, for example. And now if I would change the sample rate in my ripper, it will change it automatically into the merging audio device and then to the connected hardware, for example, to the connected merging hardware. Um, this could be fun. But perhaps I'm saying, no, no, what I want is to keep it as the merging order device because I have several um, uh, devices, apps connected to my merging order device, and I don't want to fiddle around everywhere. I want one place where I change it once and it changes 
the sample rate for all the others. So this depends a little bit the applications, where you want to go, how you want to work with. And then obviously this is the buffer size. Again, this is linked to the processing capability of my machine. Here I'm, where I'm running uh, uh, on a laptop. I have several uh, DAWs, I'm having the webcam, I'm, I'm, I'm making this presentation and so on. So I go rather to a normal or higher a buffer size, but obviously this could be lowered if you go uh, to a bigger workstation or, or, or desktop that has more processing power. So this is again really setting up the frame about what it is. This is a very interesting functionality, MixSafe it's called. It's basically very quickly, if you are in a playback modus, you want all your devices playing of course sample accurately. Uh, but if you are, but this might uh, enhance some latency, but if you are in a environment where you record and you want to diminish the latency as its minimum so you can disable this that means that the application won't be synchronized anymore but at least the the the, the latency is the lowest possible so that uh, you don't have uh, somebody uh, who who might have an effect in their monitors and so on and so on good this brings me now to the next part and this is very interesting vdm and this is exactly what I'm doing now, actually. This are, I'm using this VDM from my uh, uh, merging audio device, basically from this guy you're seeing here, to be able to talk to you and to hear your questions or to listen to uh, the presentation that uh, has been done just before. So I just connected two channels, but I can go up to eight logically four pairs basically and it's enabled and basically you see down here it says input 2324 so basically in my patch environment this 2324 means that it's going to take the number 23 and 24 of my ASIO so actually realistically because I enabled my VDM I only have 24 uh, sorry 22 ASIO in an output because I have one pair I have two VDMs on 2324 Okay, so it makes sense about this. Uh, if I would increase them, of course, it would decrease then the ASIO, but you can and then enhance it again if you need more. Again, it's a it's about a framing about what you need. Good. Um, basically, the counts about what it can do at its maximum today is here on the left side. So basically, ASIO input and output on 128 multi asio bridge 128 and vdm eight channels this is in one fs one thing that is very important to mention as we talk about sample rates is that um it depends which vdm application you use i'm just giving one example which is very easy to understand is that we go higher in sample rates, we made some tests higher in sample rates and tried to stream something from uh, from the web with a Chrome browser and the same thing with a Firefox browser. And what we've noticed, for example, is that the Chrome browser, as soon as you go higher than 48K, starts really to make some artifacts and so on where they're none with Firefox. So the VDM issue when going higher in sample rate is really then dependent on the application you use about uh, how your system is then running or modifying it to be able to listen to it properly or not so there is a little uh, let's say setup to be done and research about the application if you go higher in sample rate with vdms good let me go to the next part, and these are the little few options that are available um, with the merging audio device. So they are deployable in uh, virtual machine environments. Uh, we're going to see a little bit in a second with a practical case. It's support of ST2022-7, and it support uh, equally NMOS ISO4 and ISO5. These are three uh, uh, options independently. Uh, they can be added to the merging audio device. Good. Practical cases, I have five for you. Um, four DAWs, basically using multi-ASIO driver with VDM, uh, with ST2022-7 uh, for full redundancy, with, in a virtual machine environment, and a broadcast remote production combo with Anubis so that I have no latency. Because that's exactly what I'm doing now. I have here my Anubis, and actually I'm mixing uh, my different sounds, for example, or what's coming from my Ripper, uh, I can mix it, if I show you quickly here, I can now quickly play it back. You hear it as well, and this has no latency because I use the DSP 
of my Anubis to be able to mix it. So also I have no latency in my headphone from whatever I'm doing, I'm talking because I'm not going through my workstation on that aspect, okay? So a few practical schemes and you will understand it straight away. So this is the first one, very basic. So you see on the right side here, my computer, what is important to understand, it's a Windows 10. So it's supported by Windows 10, not by Windows 7, but at the same time, most of the of the of the infrastructures of the of the studios and people, broadcasters and so on, have done this move now. But still, to make it very clear, we have the computer that contains the emerging audio device connected to the network, either with a switch or not, and to an Anubis. Uh, this will provide the ASIO clock and the PTP to be able to work in my network in this case. So for the PTP, there could be, of course, a grandmaster clock somewhere else, and that is triggered through the network. Uh, connected to ASIO in an output to a DAW, a Sequoia, for example, and then there is an ASIO bridge, ASIO bridge for a Ovation Playout system, for example, because I, I launch some effects and I want to record them inside and I construct a show, for example. So uh, these are possibility. This is one possibility with the merging audio device. The next one would be a bit more complex is that now instead of having one ASIO instance, I have two ASIO instance with an Ableton at the same time and a Cubase that is bridged into my Pyramix, for example, all working in the same computer at the same time. And in that case, typically, I would set certainly my merging audio device as being the sample rate master. So I change the sample rate here, it will change it for all the three applications at the same time, as long as they're open, obviously. Um, the next functionality, and this is where it becomes more in a broadcast environment and interesting, is, and you see it here now, we've seen the Azure Bridge, the multi-Azure, and now the VDM. So the VDM is exactly that uh, I could have a Adobe Suite, for example, um, editing some video or just some audio, and I, obviously I need to record some voiceover artists. And I can have a session link via VDM connected to my merging audio device that is then sent back into my Adobe suite. So if I have an Anubis on that case, I could even send it back in here because I want to sum it to something else and then send it back into the Azure, for example, going back to the Adobe suite. I put YouTube down here to show you that you can have several VDM applications running at the same time, obviously. The next uh, little functionality is now the, the redundancy with the ST2022-7. It means that the same installation here in terms of the application, the audio applications, now is redundantly uh, uh, connected to a second switch. And uh, here I, I show, if, if, if you see, you might see I move from Anubis to something called Anubis SPS. That's a new version of Anubis that is basically supporting straight away as well the ST22, uh, sorry, the ST2022-7. So you have two RG45 connectors, so you can have two feeds coming in and it stays happily in the entire network infrastructure. Obviously, this is after network uh, design and architecture. We're not talking about this here, but MAD or merging audio device is clearly supporting uh, the redundancy on that aspect. Um, the next aspect here is virtual machine. And we have um, some tests at the moment going on that are uh, rather conclusive. So it means that MAD is happily optionally running uh, on virtual machines so that you obviously can have your whatever is needed application running on those virtual machines and be connected at one point on a hardware device so that you can monitor or record and microphone at the same time without any latency. That's always the aim uh, on that. The next example, and this is a little tricky, but it's a very interesting aspect of it is that um, we've seen that until now I always placed a switch in there. Uh, now I remove the switch because I could be a, in a virtual machine environment and I would use uh, an Anubis with a merging audio device obviously and I would use an Anubis SPS to be able to connect a microphone and a headphone for example to record uh, a few speakers or whatever it is and to be able to listen to them. But I remove the switch because Instead of now of being a redundancy, it has also the switch capability. So I have the network connected to the virtual machines being on one connector and the next connector to my local network, for example. Um, so it can do switch 
as well. And this is then the remote broadcast with my merging audio device. Um, what is interesting is that obviously with my remote broadcast, you have, so this shows a little bit your microphone inputs and so on and your speakers or headphones, and you have your merging audio device that always can connect to Azure Bridges, to VDMs, and to multi ASIO uh, if you have several applications running at the same time on that. I didn't mention it, but very important, I showed it with Anubis each time. We have here the same configuration or roughly the same configuration as before, but now instead uh, on the top of it, we have a Ripper. Uh, so they can all run together, sorry, in the same Windows 10 computer, but now not with an Anubis, but obviously with a happy or horse. So our elder uh, converters uh, um, are still compatible with the merging auto device and can be used happily on that aspect and 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 you can replace the old Azure driver with the merging auto device and this will run all smoothly you obviously have to 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 update uh, the firmware under happy on the horse and and then you happily run it the way you want with the with the with the latest uh, version of merging audio device good this gives us a little a little summary overview about what the merging audio device is really doing. Um, so it's an Azure bridge, obviously, so multiple Azure uh, uh, applications, um, bridging in and outputs from one application to another as well, without going physically in and out, for example, to a converter. It supports VDM. It supports optionally ST2022-7, virtual machines and NMOS ISO 4, ISO 5. And um, yeah, it comes with every Anubis or Horus or Happy, free of charge. The options are obviously optional. Uh, and the you will then be able to download uh, later on this uh, presentation. I, I put here a hyperlink so that if you want more information, it, it it um, connects you directly to our no knowledge base where you can have more information about the merging audio device on that aspect. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I hand it back to Andreas. All right, uh, thank you, Maurice. And I'll bring in Roland again and see if we have any immediate questions concerning or regarding the merging audio device. Yeah, a couple of uh, questions. Firstly, is it uh, available now? Or when is so, it available? I mean, as I said, is it not? It's not officially available now. When were we? The 28th of July. Uh, it is available. Normally, we're gonna launch it uh, at the end of the holidays. But um, if really there is a critical moment, we are in a release candidate uh, moment. So uh, it, it, there are no um features anymore it's basically the latest little bribs to fix and it runs quite smoothly um so if there's really something a project where you need to test it now i'm happy to to forward it to 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 merging i mean to ricardo at merging who then can be in contact with you to have a version to try it out but officially it will be at the end of the holidays Okay, so uh, before we hit the final uh, round uh, uh, of questions or discussions, um, I just want to uh, take the chance uh, to remind everybody that there's still an offering uh, available from ALC Networks, the virtual sound card, Ravenna virtual sound card, um, which had been developed uh, some uh, years ago. The uh, Ravenna virtual sound card uh, operates under Windows 7, 8, and 10. Uh, uh, supports the WDM driver model, now ASIO. Um, sorry for that. Um, typical processing date, processing latency is about 10 milliseconds. And what is particular with our uh, Ravenna virtual sound card, it needs uh, dedicated um, hardware support by uh, a range of um, a particular Intel uh, network um, interfaces. You will find the list of qualifying NICs on the uh, Ravenna website, on the resource site, on the download section for the Ravenna virtual sound card. So uh, again, it's a free version. It has two playback, one record WDM device with uh, each uh, with eight channels each, not just two per WDM device. So it theoretically can play out 16 channels, record one channel simultaneously. 
And since this is uh, our own development, um, there is no commercial support for it. So you can download it for free. You can play around with it. You can work with it. You can use it in your lab. You can just use it to check out how Ravenna works in principle, download it at a Ravenna network resources. However, if you need any commercial application or need it for any commercial application uh, together with the adequate support, then I'll definitely have to redirect you to the offerings by Lavo and, of course, by Merging Technologies. So, um, yeah, Roland, I think that brings in the final round of uh, questions uh, and remarks, discussions. So I may bring in um, Jochen, Johannes and um, Maurice again. So, do we have any further questions? Anything we want to discuss, want to answer? Um, I haven't got any more questions um, coming in. If anybody wants to post some, they can they can post some. Um, they're very welcome to. But obviously, we had a few questions um, during it that that were answered. So uh, that that was great. But if anybody's got any last minute questions, now's the time to ask. Yeah, actually, um, as I said uh, earlier uh, during the introduction, this is our final uh, webinar for the summer series, but there is, of course, more to come. Um, uh, again, here's the URL for the uh, uh, Ravenna AS6770 2110 resources. Of course, you'll find uh, lots of interesting stuff at the LAVO and the merging uh, websites as well. And yes, um, in terms of uh, webinar series, we are currently looking into uh, scheduling and lining up um, another series of presentations uh, for, um, well, we call it autumn or fall series. Uh, we don't have a fixed lineup yet. We don't have any dates yet, but uh, you may expect starting this around or just after IBC. So if you're interested in uh, following us and for and, and, and continuing um, dialing into our Ravenna webinars, uh, watch out for any announcements on, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever social media is out there. But uh, more important, I would like to encourage you to subscribe to our Ravenna newsletter where you will find uh, uh, all these uh, important informations coming into your uh, inbox. The uh, Ravenna newsletter can be subscribed to directly from the main page of our Ravenna website at ravenna-network.com. So for all of you uh, who stayed with, that, uh, with us um, um, until now, I wish you a very, very happy summertime. Enjoy the uh, hot days, um, have a bath, have a cold beer, whatever um, suits you best. And again, uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, Johannes, Jochen, Maurice, and of course, Roland for helping out on the organizing all the webinars. So again, uh, hope to see you uh, this autumn and enjoy the summer. Um, let's take it from there. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>